Hello. I have been thinking a lot about Del Flamingo ever since I read chapter 1114. And I'm wondering if I have been completely wrong about Del Flamingo the entire time. And what if Del Flamingo is meant to be more of a savior, a martyr, possibly? Um, and his overall evil demeanor and persona is a distraction from him actually trying to protect us. Okay, not us, but his people um, from this secret knowledge that he has. And in the end, we're all going to be crying over Doflamingo. Wouldn't that be crazy? Now, I'll probably be wrong about everything I talk about in this video, but I just want to humor the conversation for the fun of it. I have felt this weird tug, this weird emotional tug towards Doflamingo since um, the last chapter, and mainly because of his interaction with Magellan. I felt that it was almost borderline a friendship kind of conversation. Now, could Magellan just be doing his job? Absolutely. But me reaching, I, I felt like they were talking because Magellan maybe knows that there's more to Dofi, Doflamingo that we don't know about, that we didn't realize. And maybe they both know something about the world government that is terrible that's happening and they're both in on stopping it or at the very least protecting what's theirs and their kind of people. I have no doubt that Doflamingo is likely just a sociopath Psychopath or psychopath even. And he's just essentially a product of his past and also his own genetic makeup. And that while he can care for his people, he literally does just want power and revenge um, for what was done to him. And also just to cause chaos. That could just be what Doflamingo is. But there are little things that I realized um, as I was just thinking and, and looking up a couple of things where I was like, maybe Maybe Dofi has a bigger heart than I realize. When you look at Doflamingo's crimes <laughs> and the totality of them all, it's pretty terrible. Especially when you read the sagas, arcs, whatever, the way I got to um, during my first read through of just binging through it all. He looks like a maniac. And I'm not saying he's not. Um, he killed his dad. He killed his brother. He literally manipulated the entire Dress Rosa, turned them into toys, killed, murdered, all those things, right? It's bad. It's bad. But is it as bad as we think? You can look at Doflamingo and see that, yes, he did bad things, but what were his intentions? And that's more so what I want to talk about uh, throughout this video, starting with Corazon. So <laughs> I did go back and, and kind of breeze through Law's backstory and um, some of the, the different parts we got of Doflamingo. Yes, when you look at Corazon as a whole, you just see Doflamingo killed his brother. Um, and yes, it was likely due to betrayal and part of it being you don't break the loyalty. But if Doflamingo is in fact aware of secrets, he knows about this crucial treasure that could shake the foundations of the world, which could that, I guess it could be the one piece, but probably not. Let's just say it's not. Um, if his brother is not only betraying him, but with the government, and if his whole goal was to protect his brother and his people and everybody from this secret and his brother's tied to it, maybe it's more than just him trying to stop him from, you know, telling all his secrets as a pirate and more so stop him from creating more destruction that is inevitable, which makes the brother's death even sadder because then it really makes you feel like Dofi did not want to kill him, but he had to kill him. Now, no, he never had to, okay? I'm, again, I'm reaching, but I'm saying if he was really doing it for the sake of his people and to think that he could have possibly been trying to protect his brother, you know? And it's interesting because his brother does think of him as just evil, right? He says that his brother was born evil, um, essentially, and like he can't be redeemed. But how much did he get to know his brother? There were years where they were apart. Now, do I blame him if he's wrong? No, because he watched his brother kill his dad. But there's a big chunk of time where he doesn't know how his brother has developed. Like he doesn't know the secrets that his brother might have learned. And Doflamingo already seems like he's not just out there 
um, spreading his business, <laughs> you know? So I don't think that he has as much knowledge as he thinks he does on his brother, even if he does see him doing the violent things. If it's all a ruse, if it's all an act in order to protect the greater good, which is his brother, his whatever else he's trying to protect, uh, then he wouldn't know, you know? And, and I, I wonder how much he tried to question him because he couldn't because he did this silent thing or he didn't talk. <sighs> so it just makes me, it makes me wonder, um, which leads me to, well, then his dad, Amber, like he was evil. He was a child and murdered his own dad and was talking about how he wanted slaves, <laughs> which is horrible. Well, yeah, that's not good. But I have a thought on that as well, starting with in general, as I think we've all thought about. Um, yes, he was a little menace and bad, but he grew up seeing that. And some people, they they don't naturally have the same kind of moral compass as everybody. And if he's seeing that this is the way things are, this is life. And he saw it at a, like, since he was born, I could see him adapting that and wanting that. I would hope he would change. <laughs> But he wanted that. And then not only did he want it, and maybe he would have got over that eventually, but he was beaten and almost killed and treated horribly and watched his mom die and watch his dad just be like, I don't know what to do. And like, he's like, sir, get up, help us. And then his dad, even if you think about it, his dad even tried to send them back out there, which further makes him think that maybe this place is good because my dad is trying to send us back. He can't because, you know, he done messed up. So of course his, his mind said is scrambled um on top of that he feels betrayed by his dad we clearly know he does not like betrayal it's not like he went out and killed a bunch of random people or even his brother he wasn't out there trying to be this serial killer he was trying to protect get revenge and yes he was very angry and no he shouldn't have killed his dad but i think it's easy to look at how horrible it is to kill one's parent but not the fact that he, that was all he did. He wasn't out there just going bananas um, on people. I mean, I guess he kind of did later, but that leads me to what I think happened to him. So let's just say Doflamingo is a little seed of Chucky or something and just pure evil. What makes me think that he changed? Okay, what makes me think that there was some kind of redeeming point in his life uh, where he turned himself around? Kind of. Well, okay, this is where... Bear with me, I'm gonna try to explain in the best Amber way possible. There's a panel where he's called the Heavenly Demon. And I looked that up to see if there's any kind of definition for what that is or if Oda explained that further. And apparently, I'm sure you all know this, but it also means Heavenly, I'm gonna butcher this, Yaksha. You guys, I am not educated on this. I'm just going to pull out some points that I saw that I found interesting that could tie into where I think Doflamingo could have had some kind of redemption or what he or, or how he's supposed to represent redemption. One of the things that I saw, I think it was on Wikipedia, says that the Yakshas are spirits that can be benevolent, but sometimes mischievous, connected with water, fertility, trees, the forest, treasures, and wilderness. And they appear in Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist texts. So specifically what I saw that was really interesting was in the uh, in Buddhism. In Buddhism literature, there is a malevolent yaksha. But if you read the description of this person or spirit, it sounds like Doflamingo. That particular yaksha is described as being the height of a palm tree with sharp teeth and two yellow tusks and a coat of thick matted fur. Does that not kind of embody the look of Doflamingo? And to go into why I think this ties into Doflamingo and possibly how he changed, apparently this Yaksha was monstrous and uh, malevolent. A prince tried to fight him, a specific prince, and the Yaksha was able to dodge the attacks of that prince by using his sticky hair, which to me sounds like Doflamingo's string. And the prince was impressed by, by this Yaksha and his ability and it says that the Yaksha, his monstrous state was due to wicked deeds from past lives. The prince, I think, taught him the five percepts and he renounced violence and transformed into a friendly forest spirit. And to me, this ties in so well with Doflamingo in 
the possibility of him having this redemption arc at some point in his life when his brother was not aware of, of what he was doing all the time. Doflamingo was this product of evil from where he came from. And maybe he met somebody along the way, like this prince who did change his philosophy or he learned something, which then that leads me to Treble because that kind of stumped me because I'm like, well, it seems like Treble is, is kind of what who molded him a little bit, which is, I guess, debatable, um, depending on how you look at it. But regardless, at the same time, there's a part when Law is fighting Treble, and he basically says that at this point, he's just like a puppet for Doflamingo. So it could be that Treble didn't even have as much of an impact as I originally thought, and maybe Dovi allowed, or maybe he did initially, but then Dovi, you know, had his own secrets that he learned, his own changes that he made, and then, you know, he just allowed people to believe whatever they wanted to believe. And then that leads me to Dres Rosa as a whole, because what the heck is that, right? Again, um, I don't think that being, if you're, if you're putting on a facade for the people, I don't think that you can always do it in a way that is the most, um, the most peaceful. And perhaps, because we see that Dofi was trying to gain some kind of power access, uh, and maybe that was to get more control, to stop what he could from the inside. He becomes a warlord, and then he wants to rule over Drez Rosa. So I, I do see that that could be, again, a part of his plot, a part of his scheme. He may have not even, there's a part where, the king, he is telling the king, look, I'm going to give you a chance to try to fix this uh, by getting the money, the berries or whatever he wanted to stop. Now, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really reaching with this point. But I wondered if even with that, he wasn't trying to necessarily take over. But when he saw that the king wasn't going to use violence or wasn't going to try to fight back, he was like, no, <laughs> You're not ready. You can't have this role anymore. I was going to like let you have some kind of power, but absolutely not. He literally got on his knees for his people, which I'm not saying he wasn't a good king. I'm saying that Dofi was like, this isn't going to work. You don't know what we're up against. <laughs> we can't have that. Because he could have possibly been trying to build his own army of sorts. There's a part where he also asks Kiros, Kairos, Kiros, if he would join in this uh, join him. He wanted him to join. And obviously that man wasn't going to do that. But when I think of him turning people into dolls and like gathering all those people uh, to get um, Ace's devil fruit, and he says that it's to get Luffy, whatever, trap Luffy up. But it, could it have been that he was trying to get that army and turn them into dolls? and preserve them for this big thing that was going on? I don't know. But I do know that when I think of Punk Hazard, that that arc, and even Wano, yes, Dofi was involved, but he wasn't necessarily the one trying to, in my opinion, really bring about the smile fruit that way. He was overseeing things and pushing things, but Caesar kind of had his own thing, and Kaido, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he was really trying to push the smile fruit on to people or have those kids addicted to whatever that stuff was. And we know at the end, he definitely ends Dres Rosa with this cryptic message. I don't know um, if any of this is anything, but even if he doesn't have any of the qualities or none of what I'm saying is accurate, I do think that there's a chance he ends on the better side of things. Again, we're dealing with pirates. We're dealing with a lot of people who have their own goals in mind. So I don't think, I think a lot of people in this story are selfish and sometimes crazy, but a lot of them do have good hearts. And I do think somewhere in there, or we've seen it uh, through protecting uh, or the way he treats baby five and his people and not getting upset when some of his people have quote unquote failed. We know he has that side of him. I could at least see him turning over to the good side, the good side, whatever that means um, in the realm of everything. But if this did happen, I wouldn't mind Dofi having this martyr secret plan um, all along. I would not mind at all. I may be actually pretty heartbroken. So those are my thoughts on Doflamingo after reading chapter 1114. What are your thoughts on Doflamingo? Do you think this is a possibility? Um, do you not think it's a possibility? If you do think it's a possibility, why, what are your reasons for a Green, or in general, what do you think is going to happen to Doflamingo at the end of this story? Because uh, I, I, I love his character, I think, hopefully. <laughs> this video has come to an end, but of course, I'll see you all in my next video. Until we meet again, go read.